All right, Getter, so what are we talking about today? Well, I had a question for you about how to know when you should try and branch out and learn new technologies, even if you might not have a use for them right away, or maybe stick with you know, a language or a framework you're comfortable with um, because you're having success and you like it. Well, the strategy I use for that is basically like an 80-20 principle where 80% of my time I'm doing what I'm comfortable with or using the framework that I want to use. Like React right now is my main and I'm using React. But then there's like other frameworks that pop up that are interesting and maybe I'll spend like 20% of my time experimenting with new technology, new frameworks, even if I don't have a use case for them. So if there is ever a day where I'm like, wow, React is a bad tool for this, I can then try out one of those other tools that I've been kind of experimenting with. So I kind of just do a split like that with my time. But in general, I, I try to, st once, I, once I find something that I like, I kind of just stick to it. I've found that I like React. I plan on just like sticking with that as my friend framework for a long time uh, until there's like a really good reason to switch off of it. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it and being able to like switch between that and React Native really easily has been really nice. Um, so there's other front end frameworks that come up and I play with them on the side. I'll go through the getting started. I'll spend an hour or two uh, a week looking at it or something. And then if the day arises, I may switch to them. Other than that, that's pretty much how I approach when new tech comes out. Now when you're choosing what, what to spend your 20% on uh -huh. and when you're trying to pick a new technology to learn, yeah. is it always just based on by need? like uh, trying to solve a new problem that has arisen? Or are you ever reflecting and thinking what, what weaknesses may I have or what holes may I have as a developer? Now basically I just do two things. So one, I'll go and look at technology. Uh, I'll go ser either search out for a technology, but that wouldn't be about the 20%. Maybe in my code I'm finding a problem. Like something is not performant enough um, or I need a specialized use case. And then I might search out a technology. But that, I wouldn't consider that the 20% I experiment with. The 20% I experiment with is things that I just hear uh, the tech community talking about or that I hear that's newly released. Either something I hear on Hacker News, on Twitter, on Reddit, I see a post about it and I'm like, wow, that actually looks super cool. Or I see a conference talk on it. Um, those are like the 20%. So I don't like seek out the 20% that like uh, I think would patch holes or anything. Basically, if there's an existing hole, I'll go search out a technology to fill it. Other than that, the 20% that I'm experimenting with happens to be just stuff that I come across that I find interesting and that I could see using in the future, possibly. When you're experimenting, do you alter existing projects and add in a new technology? Or do you usually start fresh a new project just to try out? Uh, usually when I'm experimenting, I won't do that much. I may like make a YouTube video on it. Um, I may, uh, but for the most part, I don't think I would integrate it into an existing project unless I felt like I wanted to spend more time with it. I might make a new project um, and I guess it really depends on the technology too, but most of the time I would create a new project, a smaller project, test it out um, in that and see how it goes. And then I would say that's like the first step. And then if I like it in a small project, I might consider then integrating it into a large project. I also kind of have, uh, I don't, sometimes when I use a technology, I know right away that I might really like it. And I actually tend, and sometimes I know a technology is like not mature enough that I don't want to spend too much time with it yet because I know I'm going to really like it. And I don't want to convert all my programming, all my projects over to that language quite yet. Um, because I don't feel like it's ready. Like I had this feeling with Reason ML, and I had this feeling with Flutter. Uh, I both like those languages or those frameworks. Uh, Reason ML is a language, but Flutter, I guess, is more of like a framework and darts the language with it. Uh, but I like both of them a lot, and I didn't want to spend too much time with them right now because I'm not ready to switch over to them. Because I feel like they still need a little bit more time to mature before I'm ready to switch over to them. So I actually I've tasted it. I know I like the language and then I'm like all right cool I have that like in the back of my mind I have an idea of when I might want to use those and then I'm gonna either wait till the point till they either have a big release and some big things change with it and then maybe I'll consider integrating it in as my main thing that I use if that makes sense 
you kind of mentioned it there, but how do you know whether or not um, a new technology or testing is mature enough for you to start using it in some of your uh, more serious products? Um, I don't know if there's like one thing that sticks out to me. A few indicators that I use is one, am I seeing a lot of other people talk about and use it? Um, I like this for a couple reasons. One, if other people are using it, that means other people are running into bugs or problems with it. And so I can find stuff on Stack Overflow. Um, that's a big worry when I'm using like smaller new technologies. I'm either gonna have to like really dive into the code to know how it works, and that's fine. Um, or I, I really wish there was questions out there so if I run into problems, I know I'm not the only one and I'm not just like stuck. Um, so I like that. Other people, I'm hearing about other people using it, then that's a plus. Um, and then other than that, I don't know, I tried it and I really liked it. it was Those are like the two indicators, I would say. And then other than that, um, nothing comes to mind with like knowing when something is ready. It's one of those things where like, it's ready on different levels of your project. Sometimes uh, your project, you can take more of a risk on a technology, whereas other times, you know, you wanna just go with something more mature. But yeah. All right. Cool. All right, guys, that's it today.